So good morning everyone and welcome to another video. Welcome back to the channel. What a beautiful morning this morning. Look at the light just streaming in through the window there. And this morning, something a little bit different. We're going to stick with the ICM theme. You may have noticed my last few videos have been ICM. But again, we're going to do ICM, but something a bit different. We're going to be using a 15 year old camera. And we're going to be doing some macro ICM. You can see I've got this beautiful collection of plants around me here. Got Phalaenopsis orchid, Alocasia, little Peperomia there. Got Sansevieria over here. Uh, what else? We've got a big ficus in the corner over here. I don't think you can see that there. Uh, another ficus behind me. And a beautiful little succulent right there. Um, which I've been photographing for the last 15-20 minutes with this beautiful light. I've been using an Nikon D90 like I said. A little 40 millimeter macro lens. So this is a 15 year old camera. So the megapixels are not up there with the Fuji. I think it's only got like 12 and a half or 12.3 megapixels, something like that. But still producing some great images. And I thought I would take this opportunity to share them with you. So like I say, we've got some plants and we're going to be doing some ICM. A bit cold outside today, so that's why I decided I was going to stay in. I think it was minus 23 this morning, even though the sun's shining. So I uh, figured I'd stay indoors and do a video. First thing I'm going to say, uh, since I've been doing more and more ICM, is make sure your lens and your sensor are clean. You've got a blower and a lens cloth. Uh, just clean the sensor with some wipes there as well. But I've noticed a few of my images got spots on them before, so uh, I made sure this time Make sure your lens and your sensor are clean. Uh, it's really difficult to get spots off of some of these ICM images. I've been taking some images this morning and the light was absolutely amazing. It's kind of going away from here now. And it's actually coming in the window which is just to the side of the camera. You can't see it there. I do have a little table there uh, and I'll set the plants on there and take some more as the light moves around the other side of the house. I am shooting on aperture priority. I don't have any filters on. I haven't found a need for them. Uh, I'm getting slow enough shutter speeds as long as my ISO is turned way down as low as I can get. And uh, I just vary my aperture accordingly to get the shutter speed I want. You may recall in some of my other videos I used to shoot around of eighth of a second, fifteenth of a second. I'm getting a bit more creative and I'm getting a bit braver with the shutter speeds. I'm going to second, two seconds, even three seconds sometimes and getting amazing images. Well, one thing I'll say uh, it, it took me a little bit of a while to figure out the whole macro ICM thing. Firing off shots, they just weren't working for me. The key is minute movements, guys. Absolutely minute movements. So just for example, I'll just turn this around a little bit here, side on. If I'm photographing this, what I was tending to do was putting it against a background and then I was doing this kind of thing, the same kind of movements I was do outside. Yeah, it didn't work. What you need to do, focus as close as you can or wherever you want, but I'm trying to fill the frame with a macro shot here. So I get right in close and then let it focus here. You'll hear the bleep maybe. There you go. And the tiniest of movements, guys. So once you press the shutter, you're doing a movement like this. Tiny, minute movements. Something like the alocasia here. <laughs> I bought this for the sole purpose of doing ICM images with it. It just, it just looks stunning in this store. It's actually called Nessie. Um, but I could not get the images. I was getting these weird looking images. I just didn't like the look of them. Finally figured it out. Get in close, follow the lines of the leaves or the veins in the leaves. I ended up getting a couple of nice shots where I just would take the camera and just again moving in real close and follow the lines like this during like a two second exposure or something. Uh, the little peperomia, I was doing that there too. This guy, um, it's got sort of purple and green leaves with sort of silvery tinges on it. The silvery tinges were proving a bit difficult, but I did get a few abstract images of that. The ficus behind me here, did take a few of them. Uh, some really vibrant colours in there, got a couple of okay shots. The 
mother-in-law's tongue or sans severia here. Um, same thing. Uh, I got in close. Actually, when the light was over here, you get the green leaves with a yellow stripe on the sides and the light was coming through and really almost backlighting these yellow stripes. Give me some really cool looking shots, very contrasty. Um, depending on where you focused, you were getting these really dark streaks and then these bright yellow streaks that were backlit. Uh, I did a couple there and I was really happy with them. So I'll put them up on the screen uh, in a second here. So looking at the images on the back of the screen here, I got some decent shots. I think the ones that I'm excited about, it'll depend when I get them on the computer and play with them. It's a little succulent. I don't know if you could see the light hitting it there in the window. I tried a few where I was just kind of basically filling the frame. Um, and you'll see it's got sort of bluey, green, grey kind of tones to it with these beautiful red tips to the leaves. Now when it's up there in the light, those become backlit and almost glowing. They're absolutely amazing. Um, so the first few shots were, yeah, were okay. I played around. Then I started getting in real, real close, as close as I could possibly focus. Uh, and just moving that camera, the slightest of movements. Let me move that out of the way there. I got in focus real close, like I was in here somewhere like this, and just moving the camera very slightly, checking the back of the screen after every image to see what was happening. And I, I just I, and adjusted accordingly, just moving slightly different movements, trying with the, this type of movement, circular movements, uh, but very minute movements. Remember, we're working in macro here, so we're, we're in this close, we're right in here, and we're moving the slightest of movements. And again, checking the back of the camera after every image. That way you can kind of see what type of movements you're getting, what type of image you're getting, and you can adjust accordingly. What I'll do, guys, is I'll throw up a couple of images on the screen right now. So guys, here's the, the Phalaenopsis. I'll just give you an example of what I was doing. Uh, for the actual shots you're gonna see, I'm gonna put it into the light there, so I'm getting a bit more light, just to kind of bring out the image. But just for an example, aperture priority. We're at F20, and that's given me a shutter speed of one second. And I've focused real close in the middle of the flower there and click and move. Very slight movement. Did you see how minute of a movement that was? And the image actually looks pretty good. That's without trying too hard, to be honest. Now, I'm just gonna try a slightly different angle here. Again, and watch the movement, guys. Minute movement, aperture priority, F20. And uh, it's about a second and a half this time. That one's a bit more abstract, but still a decent looking shot. For the alocasia here, let's see. Find a decent sized leaf. This one here I think I like the look of. If you'll get the angle or not, but tippy toes here. And so F20 is giving me four seconds. That's too much, so I'm just going to adjust the aperture. We're going to go down here a bit. We're going to go to F10. So aperture priority, F10. And it's giving me about a second. And we're going to go again as close as we can get. And again, just follow the vein and the leaf. That wasn't a long enough shutter speed, but we'll try again. I'll try and do it on this leaf here, maybe so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna go to 
F11 is giving me one second. No, sorry, 1.6 seconds. Here we go. Can you see how I just moved? It's giving me that nice glowy vein. It's a yellowy green tinge and then the dark foliage in the background. It actually turned out quite nice once I've processed it. So have fun with your ICM guys. Absolutely have fun. It's, it's amazing uh, how these images are going to work. So as you can see, I've moved into this other room. There's a bit of an echo in here. Uh, so I hope you can hear me okay. Usually this microphone is pretty good. Um, as you can see, I've brought the Phalaenopsis in here. Uh, it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, the colours and just orchid flowers in general are just beautiful to photograph. Um, there's a bit more light in here. Um, it's actually moving around. It was on the plant just a few minutes ago. You can see here on the wall here, it's light streaming in. But this is the type of thing I was doing, guys. I think now my shutter speed's going to be... Yeah, so even at f25, I'm not getting a slow enough shutter speed, I don't think. But we'll give it a shot here anyway, just to let you see. So, aperture priority, f25. My shutter speed is not slow enough, but there you see, you see how that slight movement? Actually, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. I would have preferred if I could get a slower shutter speed. I wish I had a filter for this lens. I'm getting these beautiful, almost high key type images. Uh, look absolutely amazing on the back of the screen. But play around. That's the one thing, guys, with ICM. My first tip was make sure your lens and your sensor were clean so you get spotless images. My second tip, experiment. Absolutely experiment. Just because I'm doing this movement, do whatever you like. I mean, at first I was doing this type of thing back here. It wasn't working great for me. I wanted those macro right in there. Abstract images. Going really soft as well on this one. Jeez, that's pretty close, guys. Again, just vary the movements, vary your shutter speeds, and you'll get some amazing images. It's worth experimenting. So have fun. See what else we can do. I'll bring another plant in. So guys, as you can see, I've brought in Nessie the Alocasia. Uh, that's not a name I gave it. That is the actual name of the variety, uh, Alocasia and Nessie. It's absolutely beautiful. You can maybe see here um, just how spectacular those leaves actually are. Absolutely amazing. The potential there for macro images is uh, pretty good, I'm sure. Now, this, this leaf here has got a lot of light hitting it. It's something to try and avoid. You can, you're getting a kind of a sheen and reflection from there. It's going to have highlights. You don't want that in your ICM images, so be careful of that type of thing. But down here, I'm getting light, but I'm not getting direct light. And let's see what we can get here. Yeah, so guys, I'm not getting the shutter speed I want, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. I did get some nice ones earlier, like I mentioned, so we'll try again here. F25 on aperture priority. And I'm just going to... Ah, it's too fast. It's not bad, I got a bit of blur there, but I can do better. Find a darker spot here. Just a bit faster movement there, guys, and I got a better image. Um, let's see if I can get something a bit abstracty. Moved a bit closer, guys. That's giving me about a second at f25. It's okay. There you go, 1.6 seconds. And I moved back and forward with that one. That's pretty cool. We got the line, like a double line. Looks pretty, pretty neat. I mentioned earlier that I'd taken a few shots of this Sansevieria out there on the counter this morning with a backlight. We're getting the light coming through the window here onto the plant and you can see those amazing colours. The patterns in the leaves are, are phenomenal. Uh, really beautiful images on their own as a macro shot, but when you add in a bit of ICM, you get something a bit more dramatic. Now, 
This would be a great shot, I'm sure. But we'll try this backlighting thing. If I go around the back here, I'm getting that light coming through and I'm getting these the yellow veins down the side of the leaves here are actually almost glowing and then I've got dark green shadows and stuff in the shot too. If I do something like this, let's find a nice spot there. And we're at F25 again guys, 1.6 seconds. And this time I'm going to follow the veins, the leaf, the shape of the leaf down like this. I went down and up. Give me a really abstracty look. Look for the light guys. There's a much better shot there. You saw you can't see me, but I'm in at the back here. Really, real close. Try not to touch the table. And we're at one second. And I think I'm just going to move the camera down the way. That's pretty wild. Let's get something a bit more creative. I'm closer again. And I'm going to go up and down. 1.6 seconds, F25. That's really abstract looking. Absolutely amazing light from behind. Looks fantastic. So, so I've came back out here. I'll throw up a few of those images on the screen now, just to let you see what's capable from a 15 year old Nikon, the D90, with a 40 millimeter macro lens. And I'm sure you'll agree those images are amazing. Uh, I'll stick a few up now with a little bit of music and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you in a bit. Guys, do let me know uh, which images you prefer. Um, did you like the orchid images the best? Did you like the really abstract alocasia shots? Did you like the green and yellow Sansevieria? They were pretty amazing too. And uh, don't forget the little succulent back there. I think those are the stars of the show. But everyone has their own taste. So let me know which images you prefer in the comments below. So I hope you've liked what you've seen so far, guys. <laughs> it was really uncomfortable down on my knees in there trying to get those images. Uh, but I got a couple, and I did get some earlier um, that looked pretty good. So uh, I'm going to share them with you in the gallery coming up at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that gallery. You're going to absolutely love these images. They're going to blow your mind. So I do urge you guys, everyone's got plants at home. And uh, I do urge you, try taking a few images of your houseplants or in your backyard or whatever. Embrace the shake. And I've said it before, embrace the shake. Get creative. Experiment with your shutter speeds, experiment with your movement, and you're going to get some amazing images that you'll be really happy with. Now, did give you a couple of tips. One was keeping your equipment clean, your lens cloth and your blower. The other one was experiment with your movements. If I give you another tip, guys, it's not everyone loves ICM, and I totally get that, but shoot for yourself. Don't shoot for anybody else. Don't shoot for what you think is going to get your likes on YouTube or Instagram or wherever. Shoot for yourself. If, if ICM has taught me one thing, it's shoot for yourself. If you're happy with the images, then that's the main thing. And I guarantee you, absolutely guarantee you, 100%, your photography is going to improve. You're going to capture some amazing images. It certainly helped me. ICM has helped me focus my attention more on my photography and lately my photography has improved even if I do say so myself. So those are my three tips guys for creative ICM. Keep your gear clean, experiment with your shutter speeds and your movements and shoot for yourself. Three great tips which will certainly help you capture some amazing images. So embrace the shake guys, stay tuned for the gallery coming right up don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The channel is doing pretty well recently, so uh, 
Give me the thumbs up, share the video with your friends because they're going to love it. Everyone loves plants, everyone loves flowers. Tell them to experiment, tell them to watch the video. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now. Thanks for watching.